Hey, it's Jake from EVPL Central. Today we're going to look at using Google Sheets to create a personal budget. Google Sheets is an online spreadsheet tool that is essentially a free version of Microsoft Excel. So if you're com comfortable with Microsoft Excel, you'll be totally comfortable with Google Sheets. And if you've never used a spreadsheet program before, Google Sheets is a great place to start. Google Sheets is free. It's part of the Google Drive, uh, Google Apps suite you will find online by going to drive.google.com or you can just type in sheets.google.com to access Google Sheets. You will need a Google account. Getting a Google account is free. If you need assistance getting a Google account, if you check out the EVPL Academy on evpl.org, you'll be able to find information for creating a Google account. There's a great tutorial there put together on our EVPL Academy. Okay, so we're going to start here. I went to sheets.google.com and I'm already signed into my account, but from here it gives me the options to start a new spreadsheet or I can see recent documents down here at the bottom owned by me as well. But I'm going to be using the Start a New Spreadsheet tool here. And you'll notice there are some templates in this gray shaded area at the top of the screen. You can find lots of templates built in. You can also find them across the web and other locations. But I'm going to click here on Template Gallery. And it's going to open the entire template gallery that is put together by Google Sheets and available to you from your Google account and you can see different ones that are here. You'll notice they have headings, for example, work, you have project management, you have connected sheet examples, personal. And we're gonna be focusing under personal, but I'll come back to that in a second. If you work in education, or let's say you coach a team and you wanna track things, you can use this great book, attendance and assignment trackers here, they're great. There is a team roster, there are calendar tools. Uh, just because it says 2021 calendar, 2020 calendar here, you can certainly make a calendar for this year, next year, five years out, ten years out. Really easy to do. There are great how-to tools here in Google Sheets. Uh, so I'm going to scroll back up here and, uh, excuse me, scroll back down, I should say, and go to personal here and just highlight a couple of these. And uh, before I jump into budgets, I will say the to-do list function on here is a dream it's easy to use so if you're looking to have a good shared to-do list for your team if you don't want to venture into any paid services just sharing a google sheet with the to-do list here it's fantastic all right so we're going to look today at monthly budget because the monthly budget tool is so wonderful on google sheets so let me show you some of the things it can do so i'm still here in the template gallery on google sheets and I'm going to click on monthly budget. From here, Google is going to go ahead and build me a new document, or excuse me, a new spreadsheet. It's automatically saved in my Google Sheets, in my Google Drive. You'll see that by the little document status icon here in the header. It automatically names it monthly budget. You can click here and rename this at any time, and it shows you it's in your My Drive, so it's in your files. I'm going to add uh, June 2022 right here. And you'll see it tells you the last time you saved it for last edit was seconds ago. And if you wanted to share this with someone else right away, you can click on Share and share that with a spouse, with a friend, with whoever else you're doing a budget with. And I will let you know, this is just a summary page here. It is locked. You'll notice it has a little lock to tell you there are areas that are locked. And it has uh, some getting started information at the top. This can always be taken out later if you decide you want to print this budget. But it says get started. Set your starting balance in cell L8. So if you think back, if you never used a spreadsheet document, if you think back to color by numbers from elementary school, we're going to go across the top here and look for column L and come down to row number 8. And here we are. You notice it's only at the highlighted cells. Try not to alter cells that contain a formula. I'll talk about formulas in just a minute. Formulas are pretty important in those spreadsheets. 
So you put your starting balance in your account in cell L8, or starting balance you have. And you put your planned spending amounts in the income and expenses tables below. As you enter data in the transactions tab, which you would do throughout your month, the sheet will automatically update to show a summary of your spending for the month. So the transactions tab is the second tab down here. And we'll look at this in just a minute. I'll come back and show you some a little more about that. So let's come back here. We've got our starting balance. And we're going to just estimate that we have $2,912 on hand. That's the number we're going to pick. And all we have to do is type 2912 and press enter. And it automatically shows that um, our information is updated here. So we've got to put some information in. And remember, we're only going to edit the highlighted cells. So the starting balance cell was highlighted. We're going to scroll down a little here. And you'll notice you have some other highlighted cells. And if you notice where there are under the totals columns for expenses and income, you can always change these categories. For example, they have custom categories here. You just click on it to uh, retype in. It'll overtype the uh, title. So if you wanted to be specific. So let's pretend, um, let's go to utilities and because Centerpoint might be your utility company, we're just going to rename that Centerpoint. It's that easy. And you just press enter and it saves it. You could, if for debt, if you um, know there's more than one debt you're paying off, you could say debts. Just make it plural. Uh, just for my convenience though, right now, I'm going to rename my center point file back to, or line to utilities. And we are good to go here. So I've got my categories here. And notice they've got some numbers filled in. We will go through and just edit these. Um, and we'll see what all happens with our graphs here too. So right now, for um, let's think about what we're going to budget. What are we going to plan here? So maybe for your home, for your mortgage, for your payment, anywhere, maybe this is for rent. This is going, let's say it's 725. You press enter and it updates automatically. And let's say for food, we're going to budget $390. And I'm just budgeting, this is for one person. I'm not planning for any pets. This is just an example of how to use the sheet. I know this might not be realistic for everyone, but this is just an example we're going with here. All right, for gifts, I'm going to leave that alone for now because I don't know if I'm going to have any gifts I'm going to be giving in the month of June. For health and medical, um, I might have a copay at the doctor's office. So, and I'm thinking, I mean, maybe I'll have two appointments. And my copay is usually $35, and 35 times 2 is 70. So, we're just going to type 70 and press enter. For transportation, this can be your fuel, this can be um, for your car, maybe you have um, something you need to get fixed on your car too. So let's just go ahead and, gosh, gas is kind of high right now. So if I fill, it costs about $50 to fill my gas tank up. And if I do that once a week, and there are four and a half weeks, oh gosh, let's go ahead and just play it safe and budget a little higher. So we're gonna type $250 for gas. Personal expenses. Gosh, I don't know yet. Um, I know I don't have a pet to worry with here. So for my utilities, it is getting warm outside. I'm going to have to use that air conditioner a little more. So I'm going to just estimate $300 on utilities. We can come back to that. Maybe that's not going to be the case. I'm not traveling anywhere, so I'm going to leave that at a zero. Now debts, maybe I'm paying off a credit card bill or a, another uh, charge I have on an account. So I might say maybe that's an $85 charge and maybe I've got some other things I wanna just have on money on hand for. We could say that's, mm, let's say 200. So from here, uh, right now, so we're saying our starting balance for the month was 2912 
Let's look over here at income. So paycheck, this is for the whole month. So we're gonna zero that out for a minute. And I know that's gonna change some of the charts here, but we'll come back to this. Um, now let's see here. If I, um, let's pretend I make $990 a week. This is just pulling this out of thin air. And we're going to go to our calculator and let's say there are four pay periods this month. That's $3,960. So we could type 3960 and press enter. And we can come in here and for savings we could say we're going to, um, maybe we're going to put $150 in our savings this month. No bonus pay, no interest income, no other sources of income here. So we have got some basics of our budget in here. Um, no gifts, so we've got food, health and medical, uh, rent and home fees, maybe mortgage, transportation, utilities, debts, and other. Uh, let's go down to the transactions though here now. So let's, um, you notice here, it's got some built-in expenses. We are going to go ahead and I'm just going to delete these for now. It doesn't hurt to delete them. And we talked about formulas earlier. So if you notice, I click on the cell. If I look at the formula line, there's nothing there. Now, if I click on the drop-down list here, this is just a category. So there is nothing in the formula there except just telling us what's typed in there. We're taking that out. Now, um, let me go back and show you. When you look at the formulas here, um, let's click on one that's going to show you a formula. There you go. So this is cell E17, and that's a product of D17 plus the difference of I22 to C22. And just notice, don't alter anything that's got a formula in it. So in your transactions here, we're going to just take off these here as well. Think of this as your checkbook registry, if you still use a checkbook. And we're going to say, um, so we're starting with June 1st here. We're going to have June 1st. And we're going to go ahead and say we're paying the rent or the mortgage here. Um, and we budgeted for the month 725 and let's say we're paying that so we'll click on our transactions here 725 and we can just press enter and it automatically adds the dollar sign and the decimals or the decimal now under income let's say uh, we know June 1st is a Wednesday, we get paid on the 3rd, and if we go back and look at our calculator, we remember it's $990 a week that our example person here is making. So we can, on our transactions, on our income, put June 3rd for $990, and we'll just put pay, and under category, we can just choose paycheck. All right, now let's go back and look at the summary page here and just see what else happened. So you'll notice it's showing you actual so far. So this field, um, just through the function for cell K29 right here, has updated to show you your actual as you fill in the transactions. And this will, as you fill in your expenses and your income, your summary sheet here will give you an overview and show you what's going on. So for example, when we put in our transactions sheet here that we paid on June 1st, the rent or mortgage, it went ahead and marked that as the actual for what we had budgeted. But let's say things happen and there was a service call. You've called someone to your apartment for service and um, we'll just go ahead and say that was an other. But 
Oh, sorry, I clicked on the wrong tab there. Let's say on 6-7, we had a $55 service call. And we can click on other from our list here. And that's going to come out of our other here. It's a difference of $145 we have left in our other funds here once we take away that 55. And it's showing you you've used 55 of that other. So it's really simple to put these sheets together. And as you go through your month, things will continue to come in, come out of your budget. Um, now, one thing that is important to note, if you go to uh, print this, you can click print at any time, and it will show you your monthly budget overview here and your expenses and income. It's a really nice breakdown if you click on the print tools here in the print settings, you can choose workbook and you'll get the entire listing. So you'll get not just your first sheet, your overview, but you'll also get your transactions and your expenses and income here. So it's a really great way to just have it all ready if you need to print it out, if you're going to talk to someone about your finances. Plus you can also just click share at any time and put an address in if you need to share this with someone else. All right, so that's a quick look at a monthly budget. I wanna take you back real quick and show you the other budget tools here in Google Sheets because Google Sheets is just such a wonderful tool. So if we come back down again to the personal section, you'll notice annual budget tracker here. I'm gonna click on that and just show you a little bit about how that works. So you notice at the bottom here, you're going to have some more tabs come in this time. And on your first one here is the setup. It tells you plan and track your monthly spending for an entire year. You use this template by getting started by entering your starting balance in row 13 below. So this is row 13. This is where you enter your starting balance. You can feel free to rename or delete categories in these tabs in the in expenses and income tabs. Your changes will automatically reflect on the summary tab. So if you notice, this is your summary tab here at the very end. This is great if you want to track things throughout the entire year and it's going to automatically graph things for you too. You can fill in your income by month. If you work and you get tips, um, savings, interest income, dividends if you have investments, gifts, refunds on things, a lot of things you can put in here. You can uh, document things just for your children, just on debt, education, entertainment. There are so many categories in here pre-planned for you. But like it said in the setup here, you can change what you need to change. Um, so it's a great tool if you want to get a handle on your entire year's budget. We have lots of great uh, print resources in addition to being able to help you get started with a service like Google Sheets here at the library. We have great books on Google. We have uh, great books on Google Workspace, which is using the whole Google Drive suite. We can also help you get started just exploring different tools on computers with our Book of Librarian service here at EVPL as well. So be sure to check those out. Follow the information on the screen and in the video description. It's been great having you for this uh, quick tutorial online today. Thanks for learning about budgets and Google Sheets, and I hope you have a fantastic remainder of your day.